Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video where I'll be taking a look at the M4A1 and giving some tips that will hopefully help get you set up for some effective weapon builds. The M4 is my personal favorite weapon in Escape from Tarkov because it's a rifle that can go anywhere and do anything. It has an insane variety of attachments and core pieces that can turn it from a generic carbine into a short CQB rifle or a DMR with a high powered scope for long ranges. With a fire rate of 800 rounds per minute, the M4 is a serious threat at close range and also has the muzzle velocity to make long distance shots possible. One of the biggest advantages of the M4 in my opinion is that with the right mods you can build weapons with an amazing balance of low recoil and high ergonomics, getting the best of both worlds on most setups. I'm going to run through a step-by-step -step build of the M4, starting from the base receiver, and talk a little bit about each of the vital parts and the options available. I won't be going into detail on every attachment and part available, as that would take way too much time, but I'll give suggestions on parts that I like to use or that are statistically the best option available. To start with, I bought a blank M4 lower receiver from Mechanic Level 3 for 20,000 rubles. This is the starting point for a full M4 build. The first additions to this are going to be three core pieces that give a nice stat boost to the weapon. An upgraded upper receiver, charging handle, and buffer tube. For the upper receiver, there's two options. First there is the MUR-1S upper receiver, which is sold by Level 4 Peacekeeper for about $200, or the Novesk Gen 3 from Mechanic Level 4 for about 30,000 rubles. These provide a very nice boost to both recoil and ergonomics right out the gate, and I consider them a must-have for any effective M4 build. Next up, the SI Advanced Buffer Tube is sold by Mechanic Level 4 for about 9,500 rubles, and will give you another increase to both recoil and ergonomics. The final piece I like to add for a free stat boost is the Raptor Charging Handle, which is sold by Mechanic for about 7,000 rubles and gives another 3 ergonomics. Now that we have a solid base for the rifle, it's time to start building out to the barrel and the handguard. There's a ton of options when it comes to handguards on the M4, and thankfully many of them share somewhat similar stats, so you aren't handicapped too much by using something that you think looks nice. Statistically, the SAI Quad Rail and LVOA handguards are the best options, but any upgrade from the stock handguard is going to allow you to start making a nice rifle. The SAI handguards are sold by level 4 skier for around 26 to 30,000 rubles, and the LVOA handguards are sold by Peacekeeper level 3 and 4 for about 160 to $200. One thing to note when choosing a handguard is that most of them require you to install the MK12 low profile gas block, sold by Peacekeeper level 3 for about $50. If you can't acquire this piece, your choice of handguards is really limited, so keep that in mind. You'll also need to purchase accessory rails to put attachments on many of these handguards, and that varies by each model. The M4 currently has three options for a barrel as of patch 11.7, a 260mm, 370mm, or 406mm barrel. The 260mm provides high ergonomics, the 370mm gives better recoil reduction, and the 406 barrel slightly improves muzzle velocity. All three are viable choices, so it's really up to you and what you're looking to build your rifle for. For this build, I'm going to add the 370mm barrel, MK12 gas block, and SAI 14.5 inch quad rail handguard. Next up is the stock and the pistol grip. Again, there's a lot of options available to choose from. In these categories, the stats do lean quite heavily towards a few clear victors, but you can still get away with using other options if you prefer the look or just don't have them unlocked. There are two stock options that I use as my go-to when building M4s. The MOE Carbine Stock Series with the rubber butt pad, and the SI Viper Mod 1 Stock. These stocks provide the greatest balance of recoil reduction and ergonomics gains out of most of the options, making them a pretty good choice to add to any build. The MOE Series is sold by Skier and Peacekeeper Level 3 for about $70 and gives more recoil reduction, with the Viper Stock sold by Level 4 Mechanic for about 9,000 rubles and giving higher ergonomics. The F93 Pro Stock is an interesting option that doesn't require a buffer tube and gives a pretty good recoil reduction along with high ergonomics. The Troy M7A1 PDW Stock is another specialized one that doesn't require a buffer tube, and as far as I know it gives the highest ergonomics boost possible on an M4. The PRS Gen 2 Stock from the RSAS can also fit on the M4 with the A2 buffer tube, giving it a distinct visual along with some nice stats. For pistol grips, the clear winner when it comes to stats, and in my opinion looks, is the Naro Arms Grawl S pistol grip. It's sold by level 4 Peacekeeper for $116 and gives a really nice ergonomics boost. Outside of this, the Stark AR grips and the Hogue rubber grips both give pretty good ergonomics boosts at about half the price. 
To continue along with this build, I'm going to put on the MOE carbine stock with a rubber butt pad and a Grawl S pistol grip. Next up is the muzzle device, whether that is a suppressor to stay quiet or a compensator for maximum recoil reduction. Those who like to run suppressors have a ton of options on the M4, most of which actually provide some sort of small advantage. Keep in mind that the benefits from both the compensator and the suppressor do stack, making it really useful to run suppressors on an M4. The Knight's Armament CQC compensator is sold by Peacekeeper Level 2 for $59 and mounts the NT4 suppressors. These can generally be found in the raid or for a good price on the flea market. Market, and they provide a nice recoil reduction. The Blackout 51T Flash Hider is sold by Level 4 Peacekeeper and mounts the SDN6 Suppressor, which can provide the highest muzzle velocity for a suppressed M4 as far as I know. The Surefire War Comp and SF3P Flash Hiders are sold by Mechanic and can both mount the Monster and Mini Monster Suppressors, which provide a lower ergonomics reduction than other suppressors available. The Gemtech 1 mount is sold by Peacekeeper Level 3 and used with the Gemtech 1 Suppressor, which in my opinion opinion gives no real advantage when used on an M4, but it is an option that's available. The Hybrid 46 suppressor is a poor choice on the M4 in my opinion, as it's almost double the cost of some of the other options and it doesn't really have an obvious advantage. For running unsuppressed, the Annihilator Compensator is available early and does provide some benefit. The PWS CQB Compensator is sold by Skier Level 3 and gives a solid recoil reduction for a very low price. The real winner for a loud M4 though is the SAI Jailbreak Muzzle Device on an SAI Quad Rail, both from Skier Level 4, with the VPO 209 Compensator from Mechanic Level 4. These three pieces stack together for an insane recoil reduction, though it's an expensive setup running all three of those parts. To round out this build, I'll be adding the Knight's Armament CQC Compensator with the NT4 Suppressor. At this point, the rifle is pretty much all put together, so now it's time to just add the finishing touches with some accessories, an optic, a tactical device, and a foregrip. The last few pieces are almost entirely personal preference, and I can't really tell you what the best parts are when it comes to this stuff, so keep that in mind. For optics, I'm going to add a hammer scope with a delta point reflex sight. I like the hammer on an M4 because it has a great field of view, moderate zoom, and can also mount a backup sight right on top. Both of these are sold by Peacekeeper and run about $500 total. At this point, I also like to add the Magpul backup iron sights as well. They run about 10,000 rubles for a pair from Mechanic and add two ergonomics to your total build. These aren't necessary, but I think the free ergonomics boost is a nice touch. For a tactical device, I generally prefer the Hollow Sun LS321, sold by Peacekeeper or Skier Level 3 for about 13,000 rubles. It's cheaper than other lasers and it has a very high visibility green beam that I find easy to keep track of in a lot of situations. My choice of foregrip on most rifles in Escape from Tarkov is the Fortis Shift Tactical Grip, sold by Peacekeeper Level 4 for about $130. This grip gives a 2% recoil reduction and a plus 11 ergonomics boost, which to me is a great balance of both stats. However, depending on the overall setup you are running, it might be better to go for something like the Hera CQB grip or the RK2 or RK1 for the extra recoil reduction. Again, it's hard to say what the best option is and some builds might need more recoil or more ergonomics depending on the situation. The only thing missing at this point is a magazine, which is not too complicated of a choice. All of the 30 round options will be your basic go-to mags, with 60 and 100 round options available if you need some more firepower. I like to use the Troy Battle Mags as my 30 round choice because it has the lowest ergonomics penalty, and I use the Steel Stanag 60 rounder for the same reason. The 100 round magazine is really fun, but it has pretty high ergonomics penalties as well. Just a final note that if you need or want to use the normal front sight type gas block on an M4, you can buy the Wyndham Weaponry Rail Gas Block and a low profile front sight to achieve that look. The Badger Ordnance Charging Handle is also available earlier than the Raptor Handle and it gives you plus one to ergonomics. Something I realized about the M4 while making this video is that almost regardless of how you put it together, you can get pretty good stats in all categories and generally create a weapon that is extremely usable and competitive. Because of the base upgrades you can do with the upper receiver, charging handle, and buffer tube, it doesn't have to rely as heavily on the most expensive attachments available. So even cheap attachments can land you a build with recoil below 60 and ergonomics around 70. 
I hope you found this video helpful and gained some insight into why the M4 is considered such a powerful and versatile weapon in Escape from Tarkov. There are legitimately hundreds if not thousands of possible builds you can make with the M4, and I for one have fun making tons of vastly different rifles to bring out into raids. Whether you're setting out to run best in slot parts and join the meta, or use the upgraded base parts I recommend to create a unique looking rifle with competitive stats, hopefully this video gives you something to consider the next time you go about building an M4. I stream raids fairly regularly on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jdogthewise, and it'd be great to see some more people drop by, so I'll leave a link for that down below. Thanks again for checking out the video, leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below, and until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.